previously on Black Book. Vasilisa was captured by Alexander on the Spinner's orders. She had to play a battle of wits with a swan demon and then sought out Alexander after she escaped from a less than effective barrier. The winding halls are as full of demons as a stove corner is full of cockroaches. Some are doing quite useful work, it seems. Chorts are scrubbing floors and washing the copper furniture handles. Several spirits are bolder than the rest. They rush to attack. You enter Alexander's office. He looks through you, seeing nothing. The fur and flower does its job properly. The table is littered with papers, blueprints, and magical books. Your captor walks back and forth, quietly muttering something incoherent, as if in a trance. These are the items that Alexander took away. You may grab them, but the invisibility will subside. Hard at work, eh? What? How's that possible? You, Vasilisa? How? From where? Seems that the invisibility wears off if I talk to anyone. Someone's rapping at your chamber door. The raven perches upon a bust above the door. That must be the very same magnetism that I've heard so much about. The kind that moves people and objects about. It's none of your business. Now give me back my stuff, or else. As you can see, I have enough strength left to handle all of your pitiful defenses. Yes, that is true, Vasilisa. I won't argue that. But then again, I can't quite agree. What if I do return your items? Will you go back to the spinner? Don't try my patience. Your mentor wouldn't even want you to have the book. A fine yarn you're spinning. Yes, yes. I'm sure he wants the same thing that I do. Shortocracy. What are you talking about? Hold Yegor not wanting me to have this book? He gave it to me himself. He has his reasons, I'm sure. My noble goal could be one of them. Yes, I told him all about Chartocracy myself when he locked me inside your izba. And even before that, he told me all about Nikolai's wedding. What? You don't know your mentor well enough, Vasilisa. Lies. Don't believe me? Ask the spinner then. Where does she keep my book? In her izba, where else? But you won't be able to defeat her. You still underestimate my power. I'm aware of your power. 
but hers is greater still. She may have bestowed her charts to me, but her power has remained with her nonetheless. Don't try and scare me. It is but warning. What's that chortocracy you're talking about? Well, the title could be better, that's true. But the concept itself is sound. Imagine our motherland, where the strongest and wisest Kaldun rules. And his power grows yet, since he passes his chorts by inheritance to his successor, the next in line, whose power almost matches his own. Right. A Kaldun instead of a Tsar is just what we need. And don't forget that the demons will also work, and only for the common good. And this is indeed possible. You must have already seen only a small sample of what I've done with my charts in the mansion. Believe me, the chartocracy is possible in Russia. We have just one seal to break. I've had enough of your ramblings. His ideas make sense. Think about it, Vasilisa. Maybe he'll be useful to us after all. Thrice we've dueled. There won't be a fourth time. We have nothing to argue about. You decided to give me the book? To give up your wish? Oh no. I won't give my wish away. But maybe I can persuade him in another way. You say that I don't know my mentor. But it is you who do not know yours! The spinner wants to use the book for herself to get rid of all the chorts. Nice. This is impossible. Hell is full of rumors. Your swan told me about them. It seems many powerful demons are aware of this. Oh, my lord. We must stop her. Here, take your things. And meet me there. Alexander gives you your bag with herbs and artifacts, and wishes you good luck. He promises to help you at his mentor's izba, and you decide to meet up over there. You make haste. The spinner must not break the last seal. No time to go back home. I have to hurry for the book. It's good that I've already visited the spinner's izba. We'd still have the book. Oh, you want to go back to her? Go on, I'm not keeping you. Just joking, joking. 
I'm not leaving you. Come on. It's all right, Miss Elisa. Even without the book, you're much stronger than any other Kaldun. You've already dealt with Sashka, and you'll deal with the old crown. The real problem here is this rain. My fur is all wet. Ugh. I don't think it will be hard for you to get back the board. No. That woman can be more powerful than Nessie's or the Fern Fire. Who knows? I didn't trade blows with her. But she doesn't have the friends you have. I haven't seen any companions either. We'll see soon enough. Har! Har! You have goosebumps. A sign of a devilish presence. You look around. Your only companion is humming among the silence. Suddenly, a dark figure steps out from the shade. It is a scribe, a Zagavr dealer. The wisdom that lies upon dark pages is not that of madness. You cannot paint me as a liar. You stop on the outskirts of the village, trying to catch your breath. Clouds of your breath are torn apart by the slanting cold rain. The spinner's izba is not far away, and you decide to spend some time preparing for a meeting with this dangerous witch. Peasants cross themselves at the mere mention of the old witch. Everyone knows that meeting her is dangerous, but many still ask for her help. No village can survive without a Kaldun. The peasants shrug their shoulders. You use the sorcery of the fern, and pain shoots through your palm. Trying to move silently, you get to the spinner's izba, but it turns out that it is not that easy to get inside unnoticed. There is no Riddler skull this time, but there are three other guardians. They watch the path to the izba vigilantly, and you hear their quiet whispers. When you get closer, you finally recognize the Sentinels. They are Akulina, the Bride, and her mother. Their eyes are lost in a murky haze, a sign that they must be trapped by the Spinner's Zagavers. The surest way to help them is to defeat the Witch herself.
My God, Akulina! Who else is here? Agafya Filipovna, are you? What are you doing here? The peasant women bizarrely sway from side to side. They start to shake and mutter something when they hear your voice. Old witchcraft in these valves. She weaves not with ordinary threads. The spinner's witchcraft. The saga what I need is in the black book. We'd better hurry over to that hag. You are startled when Akulina grabs you by the wrist. What you're after, you won't achieve. Everything was in vain. Your road leads to damnation. You will find only pain. The otherworldly voices die down, and only the indiscernible muttering of the women continues. They speak of the future. That is prophecy. Prophecy! You try to touch the belt, but the sorcery of the spinner repels you. Aquilina, where did you get this belt? The spinner gave it to you? We are fated to be under her power until we are dead. She trapped us into the force of her thread. What efforts were in vain? Were all the seals in the book restored? And no one in the heavens, nor under the earth. To open the seals had his doom. And those who tried, only then saw. Darkness, death, and their tomb. What pain, Akulina? For years about it you knew. With chalk, you circle strew. You shall be greeted with sharpest pain. Until it will drive you insane. I have to hurry. All the sorcery. Who knows what her sorcery will do to them. I need the black book. The black hole in place of the spinner's throne leads into strange darkness covered in cobwebs. You hear the inviting whispers of the gloom of the abyss that leads to unknown depths. The black book is out there, somewhere. The damp earth escapes your grasp, and you fall down into the cold darkness of the pit. The pain of the impact leaves you breathless. You try to catch your breath, but the air in the bottom is wet and stale. You manage to get up and look around. A black, winding passage leads into the depths of the cave. You exchange worried glances with your companion and rush into the bowels of the underworld. It's hard to walk and even breathe amidst the thick strands of cobwebs. You have to push away one white shroud after another, and soon your hair and dress are covered with dust and small spiders. It's good to have the skull lantern, because the darkness is too deep even for your sharp eyes. You try to make out something on the ceiling, but it's covered in cobwebs. Swarms of small spiders flee before you. You reach a pale grotto, wrapped in the pale threads of cobwebs, and find three cocoons there. To your horror, they have unmistakably human forms. You take a step back when a rush of spiders escapes the otherwise empty cocoon. Inside, you find the emaciated mummy of a short peasant. A gold ring glimmers on his finger. Inside is the blackened corpse of a child beyond recognition. Only the whites of his deadly eyes stare at you, unblinking. You reel back from the corpse, dazzled by the stench of decay. A white cocoon pulsates in the middle of the cave hall. 
you hear a rustle of spiders running away from the cold light. The cocoon quietly crackles with cobwebs in rhythm with the pulsations. You touch the web and tear it down like a shroud. There is a working loom beneath it. An exhausted chort is working on the contraption. His black hide is tied with belts of the spinner, and spiders swarm all about him, sucking the last bits of strength from the spirit. The loom is covered with sorceress signs that are designed to keep this chort working for all eternity. You tear away the belts, and the chort flies up, incredulous that he has been released. Before disappearing into black smoke, your gazes cross, and you see something strange. Is it a hint of gratitude? There are some mushrooms beneath the bench. You take them with you. The narrowing path is blocked by thick cobwebs. White, slimy threads are still fresh, oozing with the pale juices of their creator. You try to find a gap in this unexpected obstacle, but, alas, the cave is well blocked. A tried and true method of dealing with locks and blocks is as reliable as always. A walkway forms amidst the cobwebs, and you manage to squeeze through. There's not much cobweb here in this little cave nook. Instead, there are bizarre, multicolored threads hanging in clusters from the ceiling, forming strange passages and patterns. Some threads are burned, and the floor is strewn with old ash. Threads that seemed chaotic at first glance seem to form an intricate pattern. Why would a spinner need so many different threads? This is a divination for sure. Complicated one at that. I would guess she has learned many things with these threads. Which thread burns faster? That is what will come true. The spinner has her own system here. A complicated sorcery. There's not much cobweb here in this little cave nook. Instead, there are bizarre, multicolored threads hanging in clusters from the ceiling, forming strange passages and patterns. You notice the chorts hanging in clusters from the cobwebs in the dark corners of this cavern passage. At first, you think that these are other victims of the monstrous spiders, but soon you realize that these chorts are not only alive, but are also playing a game of cards and haven't noticed your arrival. You come across a small cave hall furnished in a similar manner to that of an ordinary room in an Izba. Here you find a hearth and a table, a red corner, and even a spinning wheel with yarn. Only the log walls are absent, with a rocky cave wall in their place. These stones are all heavily chalked with some strange, magical symbols. An old spinning wheel is skillfully decorated with a diamond pattern. You touch the yarn and a flock of small spiders scatters away. The rustling of their small legs resembles mocking laughter.
Strange letters and geometric patterns pulsate with a sorcerous glow invisible to ordinary mortals. You are unfamiliar with both the inscriptions and the drawings. It seems that the spinner borrowed some knowledge of foreign witchcraft from her apprentice. It is strange to see peasant utensils so deep underground. It seems like this is all the furniture that's missing from the spinner's izba on the surface. Basilisa, you know I'm glad to see you. I've been waiting for you. I knew that he wouldn't be able to hold you. My guards told me about you long ago. But you took the book with such skill. This is my book. You thought you'd get away with it. What are you talking about, girl? I wanted to give it back to you. Only such a powerful sorcerer as yourself can harness its might. We'll need a dead sorcerer for the dead seal. That's what it says, right? My sight is not as good as it used to be, child. I'm not a child. There are two Khaldun's here. I think the book will be satisfied with you. <laughs> what a smart girl. But I won't do. I gave all my chores to Alexander, unlike some other Khaldun's. I am not much of a witch these days. But then again, we have to get to the crossroads for the ritual, right? Oh, my memory's not so good, you know. That's none of your business. Well, well, I know what is needed. Fine, fine. We'll go together to the crossroads and I will help you. We'll do everything together, girl. Stop. 
Stop spinning your yarn. I know that you only want to get the hold of the wish. Why? Oh, why would I need it, Vasilisa, darling? The fact is that we want the same thing. So you want to free my beloved from hell? Of course, of course I do. I want to help you. Not that Alexander, that liar, he only spins his wishes for himself. That damn chartocrat. Everything is in fact very simple. We should get rid of all the demons. And then, when there are no demons left, who is to keep your boy in hell? You believe that the book can kill all the demons? I don't know about that. Why would that chort help me then? Well, yeah, the legend says so, doesn't it? Just imagine, no Kuldoons, no devil. We'll live as if in heaven itself. Well, let's join forces. Nice story, but I'm not buying it. Why should I believe the one who imprisoned me and locked me up? You would have helped me in the beginning as my grandpa if you really wanted to. <laughs> Your grandpa? You think that he's helping you? He never loved you. He doesn't care about you a bit, as I don't care about Alexander. Lies! Don't believe me. And why do we take apprentices? You know it yourself. So that the chorts will let us pass away. He needed you solely for that reason. And I know that well. I need that damn nobleman for the exact same reason. Well, let's be frank with each other. We women have to stick together. I'll help you open the seal as a friend. You're worse than the chorts. It would sit me better be friends with Satan himself. Damn wench. Your man doesn't need such a fool anyway. You think I can't handle you? Don't you see what demon I have in my service? This is the Permian Chirang himself. He will guide you to the afterlife. Nanny, I don't believe it. I've heard everything. You... you were just using me? You're here as well? You should have stayed with your toys in your mansion. It's your turn, Vasilisa. I'm not afraid of you, nor of your spider chord.
Wait, Vasilisa, hold your zagavas. I'm sure we can come to an agreement. And give you the chance to put a knife in my back? Never. Do what I had the chance instead of listening to that fool. It's too late to cry now. I won't be caught in your nets again. A miracle, I know. I can help you with the book. I'm not lying, I swear. I can call Alexander to come for the last ride of the seals. Who knows how he might be of use to the seal of the dead sorceress. You're not of any of use right now. It seems you broke all of your ribs. We'll see each other again, if God wills it.
You find your acquaintances free of the spinner's witchcraft when you escape the dungeon. They are still dazed a bit, but you feel that this sorcery will soon subside. You find a belt spun from cobwebs nearby. Without the witch's curse, it will make a fine amulet. I've dealt with this spinner at last. And now to find old Yegor. She was lying, right? I don't see your destiny. No, your fate is in the fog, as if Vorsa himself is there to shroud it. Very well. Now back home, to Vilgert. Grandpa, are you here? Grandpa! Hmm. There's no one. Darkness. Fog. Dark. Dark! Wait. There's something inside the stove. This bottle. Kupala's ointment. Why would Grandpa need it? Wants to fly like I do. Hmm. Huh. I wish we could have made it earlier. Almost empty. This much won't increase my powers, but I'll be able to fly. And you should stay home. I'll find him quickly with this. I just need a moment to catch my breath. Your gramps must have gone to help the spinner. They're old friends, you know. They must be laughing at you right now, Vasa. Shut up, you empty skull. <laughs> I don't know, Vasya. Is it such a good idea to go alone? It'll be quicker this way. We'll be back soon, me and Grandpa. I feel a bit uneasy. Perhaps it's my sorcery finally waking up. It's just the gloomy weather, with this rain and all. Don't let it get to your head. Hmm. I can fly with you. We'll find the old man. Don't bother. I'll be back shortly. The last thing I need is to have to look for you in the rain. Grrr, don't forget. I'm not your average crow. All right, Vasilisa. 
as you see fit. you out from that road, from the afterlife myself. I've broken all the seals but one. I've done so much, I've suffered so much, and so many people have helped me. One was turned into a wolf before I saved him, and saved another from werewolves. Walked every road to get to your spot without doors and windows. I've been to a hidden village and saved it from the fog. I've walked all over, my shoes almost worn to bits, to perform the ritual of the fern flower. I met an evil witch in the town of Cherning and cleansed the possessed icon and healed Iskor from the fever. For you, I took the flower, the color of the sun itself. <laughs> I don't need to send a letter to bring you this news. I will get to you myself. Just you wait. Just be strong for a little while longer. I'll wash myself off in the waters, and all of this sorcery of mine will be gone. <gasps> I don't know what to do, what to think of my grandpa. Where is he now? My father. My mentor. What is he up to? <gasps> you can't help me from beneath Mother Earth. Even if he's up to no good, he won't stop me. I won't be stopped at the very door. It is not in vain that I've opened the seals. I feel a great power in me. He will be enough to bring you back to me. How will the meeting with Uldiko go? Was what the Spinner and Alexander true? Find out next time on Black 